Thank you for joining EdPlace Live Lessons from Your Homes. I'm Miss Billinghurst and you've joined us for a Year 6 Maths lesson on fractions today. We're an online digital learning platform written by students for children in Year 1 to Year 11, offering English, Maths, Science and 11 plus self-marked activities written by fully qualified teachers. We're bringing live English, maths and science lessons into your homes during the school closure period. So why not join us over the next few weeks as we tackle some key topics? You might find it useful to have a pen and paper handy as we go so that you can make a note of key ideas or jot things down. You'll also need to access your EdPlace account. If you don't have an EdPlace account, do not worry. You can access all of our activities if you go to edplace.com. We'll go over this in more detail when we get to that part. So welcome to today's Year 6 Maths lesson on fractions with Miss Billinghurst. By the end of today's lesson, we're aiming to have achieved either one or all of the following three steps. Understand how to divide a fraction by a whole number. Apply your understanding to independent work. Explain what you have learnt to someone else. To begin with, let's recap what dividing means. What do you think it means? It means to share something equally. Look at the stars above. There are seven in total. If we wanted to share these seven stars between two people equally, you can see that the two people would get three whole stars each and the last star would have to be split in half equally. So seven divided by two is three and a half. To complete some of the tasks you will do later, you also need to be able to simplify fractions. This means reducing a fraction to its simplest form. To do this, you need to find the highest common factor for both the numerator and the denominator. That means the highest possible number that will multiply into both. Look at the example above, 5 35ths. What is the highest common factor that will go into both 5 and 35? It's 5, isn't it? So we can divide the numerator 5 by 5 to get 1 and divide the denominator 35 by 5 to get 7. So 5 35ths in its simplest form is 1 7th. 1 7th is still the same value as 5 35ths. Something else that will help us with today's lesson is knowing that any whole number can also be written as a fraction. You just put the whole number as the numerator and the denominator would be one. For example, five is the same as five ones and 12 is the same as 12 ones. You can do this with any whole number. There is one last thing that we need to recap before we can move on to the new learning. Do you remember how to multiply fractions together? What would two ninths multiplied by four fifths be? All you need to do is multiply the numerators together, so two times by four, and multiply the denominators together, nine times by five. Two times four is eight, and nine times five is 45. So two ninths times four fifths is eight forty fifths. Excellent. Now that we've recapped all of that, let's crack on. When dividing fractions, always remember KFC. No, in this case, I don't mean the fast food restaurant. KFC stands for keep, flip, change. Keep the first fraction the same, flip the second fraction, and change the operation from division to multiplication. Let's look at an example together. 1 quarter divided by 2. Now, remember, 2 is the same as 2 ones. So the question can also be written as 1 quarter divided by 2 ones. Now, we need to remember KFC. K, keep the first fraction the same. 1 quarter stays as 1 quarter. F, flip the second fraction. So 2 ones 
becomes 1 over 2, 1 half. C. Change the division sign to a multiplication sign. Now we can work out the answer. 1 quarter times 1 half. Can you see it? 1 times 1 is 1 and 4 times 2 is 8. So the answer is 1 eighth. Have a look back at the first question. 1 quarter divided by 2. Now look at the answer. 1 eighth. Do you notice anything about the numbers? The numerator has stayed the same, 1, and the denominator, 4, has been multiplied by the whole number, 2, to get to 8. I wonder if this works with other questions. Let's see, shall we? Let's try a second question together. 3 quarters divided by 6. This is the same as 3 quarters divided by 6 ones. K. Keep 3 quarters the same. F. Flip six ones to make it one sixth. C. Change divide to multiply. Can you see what the answer will be? Three times one equals three, and four times six equals twenty-four. So the answer is three twenty-fourths. But wait a minute. We can simplify the answer, can't we? Because three is a factor of both three and twenty-four. Three divided by three is one, and 24 divided by 3 is 8, so the answer is also 1 eighth. Let's look back at the original question again. 3 quarters divided by 6. Let's keep the numerator the same, 3, and multiply the denominator by the whole number. 4 times 6 equals 24. It is a different method, but gives us the same answer, 3 twenty-fourths. We just need to make sure we simplify the answer if we can. In a moment, I'm going to be directing you to an activity you can complete to practice what we've just learned. Please log into your EdPlace account or go to www.edplace.com. You should make your way through the activity and then we will be revisiting it together. The next slide will show you the activity that we're going to use today. The activity we're going to do first is called Dividing Fractions 1. Whether you have an EdPlace account or not, we follow a very similar path to find it. Those of you with an account go straight to Maths, while those of you without an account should go to the Learn tab at the top of the website and then to Maths. After this, our route is the same. We go to Year 6 and scroll down until you find the section headed Fractions. Click on this and take a look through. You should find the activity which is called Dividing Fractions 1. Please click on the activity to start. If you're struggling to find this activity, please visit our support site on screen for a quick walkthrough on how to locate activities. I just want to make sure we're all in the same place. This is the introduction you should be able to see. If you can't see this as the introduction to the activity, please just go back to the worksheets and check you selected the correct one. If you can see this introduction, you're ready to start. As soon as you're ready, please pause my lesson and start the activity. I will go through three of the questions in the next stage of the lesson, so don't worry if you get stuck. Let's take a look through a few of the questions you've just completed, beginning with one third divided by two. Remember the first step? KFC. K. Keep one third the same. F. Flip two ones to make it one half. C. Change divide to multiply. One third times one half equals one sixth. We cannot simplify one sixth, so that is the answer. Great job, we've solved it. To type one sixth into the computer, you type the number one, followed by the forward slash, and then the number six. Now let's look at a different question. One third divided by five. K, keep one third the same. F, flip five ones to make it one fifth. C, change divide to multiply. One third times one fifth equals one fifteenth. We can't simplify that, so one fifteenth is the answer. Well done if you got that. 
Now let's have a look at the last question. One ninth divided by five. K. Keep one ninth the same. F. Flip five ones to make it one fifth. C. Change divide to multiply. One ninth times one fifth equals one forty fifth. We can't simplify that, so one forty fifth is the answer. How did you find that? Well done if you got those questions correct. Don't worry if you feel like you need a little more practice. You'll get time for that in a bit. Let's recap what we set out to do today. How did you get on? Do you now understand how to divide a fraction by a whole number? Have you been able to apply your understanding to independent work? And have you had the opportunity to explain what you have learned to someone else? If you have met one or all of these, excellent work. You've achieved our objectives for today. We know that some of you will feel you need a little more practice to really master these skills, while others are ready for the next challenge. To help you know which activity to select next, here are some suggestions. The activity we just tried is listed as activity two. If it felt a little tricky for you, why not try activity one to gain confidence in the skills you need? Then give it another go to see if you are more ready to tackle it this time. If you feel ready for the next step up, try activity three, where the numerator varies and isn't always the number one. You need to make sure you reduce your answers to the simplest form or the computer will think the answer is wrong. If you complete this and you feel ready for a challenge, have a go at activities four and five, where you have to use division to convert fractions into decimals. Make sure you read the introduction carefully so you know what to do. It doesn't matter which activities you choose, just go for the activities which feel best for you. Good luck! As we finish up for today, here are other places you can find us or access support. We look forward to working with you again soon and keep practising in the meantime.